Here's a little secret for you. Pumpkin seeds are packed with powerful antioxidants, highly nutritious, and provide many health benefits. Great as a snack or blended into smoothies, but I'm using them in a very unique and creative way. Today, we're preparing pumpkin crusted chicken salad with lemon chia dressing. I'm Chef Michael Williams, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome to the kitchen. Crunchy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. That to me is what makes a delicious chicken dish. We're making a pumpkin seed crusted chicken salad with lemon chia dressing today. Let's make this happen. So we're gonna get into two processes right now to get things underway. The first thing though, I, wanna, I just wanna get one thing done for breading our chicken first and we're gonna put that to the side and then we're gonna make our dressing. So pumpkin seed crusted chicken. This is going to be delicious. I've got some raw pumpkin seeds right here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pulse these up in our blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a good whack in here. And instead of breadcrumbs, we're using these pumpkin seeds. You know why, do you? It's because pumpkin seeds are nutritional powerhouses, loaded with vitamins and minerals, fantastic thing to incorporate into your diet. So let's go ahead and buzz these guys up. And I mean, just think breadcrumbs, right? A little bit coarse is great. It's gonna add some nice texture to our chicken. I think that's probably perfect, just like that. So let's go ahead and pour that into our bowl here. I'm gonna show you a classic technique to bread our chicken. There is our pumpkin seeds ready to go. So we'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and make our dressing. Now why? Why are we gonna spend this time to make our own dressing from scratch? I'm gonna tell you, it's because you have control over the ingredients. Do you know how hard it is to find a salad dressing with a good quality extra virgin olive oil? It's difficult, you know? I'm much bigger on this than canola oil, and that's one of the most common oils in salad dressings. So I'd much rather have extra virgin olive oil, plus this bounty of whatever else I wanna throw in there. So let's create. So a little bit of garlic, or a lot. We're gonna use lemon zest and lemon juice. I like getting both, both elements of the lemon into the dishes when I can. And you know, in terms of you know less time, more flavor, you can make big batches of a dressing like this because it keeps for months in the fridge. So why not, right? You've got the the keys to creating your own delicious food, and uh, once you have them, it's just a matter of starting that engine. Okay, so as mentioned, zest. Now a good zester is super important. I've got my microplane here. This is probably my favorite zester there is. So I'm just gonna get all of the, you know, the, the bright yellow color of the lemon here. I'm not gonna go too far into the lemon and get into the white part of it, cause that stuff is bitter. That part of the rind is bitter. We just want that very outside layer. So to have this nice fine zester is, it, it's a good, it's a good idea. It's worth the investment if you're gonna get into using zests on a regular. We've got our garlic. Look at all that lemon zest, nice. Let's go ahead and get our juice in. Now, a, an a oil and vinegar salad, a vinaigrette as it's known, can also have lemon juice or lime juice instead of the vinegar. That's where we're getting our acidity from, our citrus from, which is a very important component of salad dressing. Okay, we've got all the juice out of that lemon into the compost that goes. Now let's get a little bit of shallot in there, okay? A fantastic component of salad dressings is shallot. You'll find them in lots of homemade salad dressings. But if you don't happen to have a shallot and you've got onion, that's fine too. That'll be a good substitute. Now in order to bring lots of extra flavor into this, I've got this spice blend, pre-made, ready to go, just like exploding with flavor. So we're gonna use a good whack of this, like a couple teaspoons. And that way you don't need to add like three or four different spices, so you can just save some time, right? By eyeball, there's our two, ta uh, two teaspoons. Let's go ahead and get some fresh basil in there, shall we? I'm just gonna 
cut off the tops here. When you have the little plants like this, you can, you know, water them, cultivate them, keep them growing. One day I'd love to have a whole little hydroponic setup. That'd be awesome. Fresh herbs growing in your kitchen. Now chia seeds, oh my goodness. These guys are amazing. So we are gonna use a good whack of these. And when this purees, they're gonna add a little bit of body and thickness to our salad dressing, as well as incredible nutrition. Did you know that chia seeds actually used to be currency? Where they come from in Peru, in the Andes, they were actually used as currency because they were so valuable. They, they, you know, they sustained that culture for many years. So now, all we need is some extra virgin olive oil and we've got a delicious, beautiful salad dressing ready to go. So I'm gonna get probably about a three quarter cup of that in there. So let's go ahead and buzz this up. How handy is this little tool? You know what, I love it. It comes, it, you know, saves me a lot of time, works really well. That's all there is to it. We now have a flavor loaded, bright, floral, citrusy salad dressing, ready to go at a moment's notice. Oh yeah. Let's, let's make sure though, let's make sure. Yep, that's beauty. Okay, so now, next step. I'm gonna show you how to bread chicken, okay? So let's do a little switcheroo here. We're gonna use this cutting board a little bit later, but for now, we're gonna bread our chicken. So let's get our setup. This is how it works. We've got our flour, We've got our pumpkin seeds, but we need something in between. So I'm gonna hop over to the fridge here and I'm gonna grab an egg wash. Now that is just a couple of eggs that I beat and added a little bit of water to it. What the water does is it cr stops the eggs from being so sticky and bindy and just loosens them up a little bit. And then all we need to do is coat our chicken tenders in flour here. So I'm gonna get them nicely coated in the flour. And if you wanted to keep this full gluten free, you could use chickpea flour, fantastic substitute. So you start with the flour. You can see they're nicely dredged. Into the egg wash they go next. Make sure that they're completely covered. Okay, and then they go into the final stage. Now this is often breadcrumbs as the classic technique goes, but instead we're using pumpkin seeds. Gonna give us something a little bit different with a bit more nutritional bite. And you can see I'm trying to keep my hands from getting coated in the egg. When you do in the restaurant game, when you're you know doing a big batch of these, quite often if you're not careful, you'll end up breading your fingers to the point, no, I'm not even gonna say it. I was gonna say you could stick your finger in the deep fryer, but I won't say it. I've never done that so much breading on your fingers, don't do that. Okay, so now we're gonna get, make sure these pumpkin seeds nicely coat on this last stage here. Perfect, now these are ready to be either deep fried, pan fried, baked, you've got options at this point. We're gonna be back later in the show to pull together our pumpkin seed crusted chicken with lemon chia dressing, but before that, we're hitting the road. Stick around, you're gonna wanna see it. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. We are in the stunning Cowichan Valley at Dugan Homestead Farm with the fourth and the fifth generation of this farm right here, Aileen and Deanna. 
So tell us a little bit about the operation here. You guys are raising lots of chickens for Island Farmhouse Poultry, one of my favorite chickens. Yes, we are. We've joined the Island Farmhouse family. There's yeah. 14 local farms on the island, and we are 100% island grown, 100% island processed, and 100% island sold. That's awesome. I love it. It's just everything's close to home, right? It's all local. We have uh, 20,000 chickens yeah. in our brand new barn that you can see behind us. The small building in front of it was the original barn, built in about 19... 20, 1920-ish. Right, and so this farm is now, in your hands, the fourth generation, so all the way back to your great-grandfather? That is correct. That's it's, amazing. It was homesteaded in 1868, was when he actually made the land claim, and he's, of course, from Northern Ireland through, he did a sidetrack through Australia with his brother. He married an Australian girl, and they came up and settled here, and had between Australia and here, 15 children. Right, wow, yeah. that's amazing. I love stories like this. And so, Deanna, you've grown up here on the farm. Are you almost ready to take the reins? When, when are you gonna do that? Um, I think one day, uh, we definitely wanna build a house here and start spending more time here. So one day, the fifth generation will be here. Yeah. Yeah, right yeah. on. Now, what is it that sets you folks apart? Friends, we've got this beautiful farm, you've got all these chickens. I know that the chicken is incredible. Like, why is it that good? It's that good because a lot of it is just the care, the absolute care that we take in raising the chickens. Uh, we're in the barns twice a day. Okay. It is fully computerized and uh, everything's exact. The chickens have the perfect environment. In other words, the humidity is perfect right. for their various ages in life. Yep. This, the uh, heating's perfect for their various ages in life. Yep. The lighting, the lighting is, it imitates uh, shade so that they feel calm oh, and okay. secure. Yep. So they. You know, because they're aware of bright lights, predators, yep. and of course the feed is is um, fed into it, monitored closely by the computers. Right. All the fans are monitored by the computers. They basically live in Club Med. Yeah, they're right happy, on. Chickens. happy chickens. That's they're awesome. happy chickens. Now, one of the many factors you guys are controlling is the feed, and I know for me, I am what I eat, right? What they're eating is mixed here on the island, yep. top shelf feeds. We oh, work awesome. very closely with top shelf feeds. Yep. We know exactly what's in their diet, yep. and we monitor it all the way. Well, you know, to me, it sounds like there's lots of thought and tension and love going into this project, something I can stand behind, and that's why it this chicken always ends up in my recipes. It's just so good, it, it's so tender, so moist, so delicious and I think we just learned why. So thank you so much for everything. Oh, this well, is, you're welcome. We're been... so happy to have you here on the farm and see how the grower actually, you know, grows his chicken. Yeah, before absolutely. Before it hits the grocery store and, and the uh, end user's table. You thank know? you. Thank you. Back into our kitchen. We're bringing together our pumpkin seed crusted chicken salad with lemon chia dressing. We're even making some popcorn here. I've got some coconut oil, organic popcorn popping away in the pot. You know, I love the air poppers, but this is the best, tastiest way to pop popcorn. So with that coconut oil, I'm gonna show you a beautiful little shortcut here. Once again, we're gonna go to the triple smoke spice blend. This stuff is fantastic in so many ways and even on popcorn. So this is gonna be just a nice little crunchy accent, almost like croutons, if you will, for our salad in a little bit. We've got a hot pan here so we can start pan frying our chicken. So let's go ahead and get on that. Well, that sizzle, that's what I was looking for. That's the beauty of these induction stovetops. They heat up so quickly. They're just like gas. Now I've got some grapeseed oil in here. I'm gonna add some of the coconut oil, which I also used for the popcorn. Love my coconut oil. So once these are underway, they don't take long. They're little thin strips of chicken, the tenders they are. But uh, we obviously don't have room to add any more into that pan, that's one of the keys to protein cookery. Do not overload the pan. So I'm just gonna cook in batches. We'll in fact, you know, set this aside for another time, which actually brings me to a beautiful point. You can make a whole production out of this, make these tenders, get them all breaded with whatever breading you choose and freeze them raw. And then they're ready for you to cook at a moment's notice, right? Less time, more flavor, ready to go. While they're cooking, let's go ahead and start building our salad. 
We have such a fantastic color palette here. Eating the rainbow, you wanna get as many different colors into your diet as you can, because each color group really has their own specific vitamin, vitamins and minerals. We're doing the whole mason jar thing. You've probably seen this before. I didn't invent it, I will not claim to, but I love it, it's cool. So let's start off with massaging some kale. This is a, uh, a great way to incorporate raw kale into your diet and kind of, you know, minimize the, the roughness, the, the, the fibrousness. We're gonna massage it, that's right. So you can see I'm, I'm, I've got the kale here and I'm just taking the leaf portion and I'm breaking off that stem. You could always save these stems for like a soup or something. I always try to make use of everything. So let's go with that. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a chop. Get them sliced, certainly small little bite size. I think our chicken needs some attention here though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the chicken. They need, they're ready for a flip. And they should be nicely browned. Oh yeah. Smells incredible already. We'll come back to those. Let's go ahead and massage our kale. Here's how we do it. Gonna grab a little pinch of salt, sprinkle it on and the coarseness of the salt, the abrasiveness is what's going to really start breaking this kale down and kind of breaking down those fibers and tenderizing it a little bit. So it's just a matter of squeezing it, making sure that salt stays on. And you'll see it start to go that dark shade of green. That's what we're after. Now, typically I would continue this on for maybe another minute or two we're gonna call that done for the moment. I'm gonna add in some spinach because this is going into the mason jar. We want it nice bite size. And let's go ahead and mix this up and start building our salad. So here's how it goes. I wanna alternate colors, I wanna layer it. Okay, start off with some greens. We got two different reds here. So I'm gonna start off with peppers Okay, we'll get our pepper layer going here. And then let's go ahead and get some quinoa in there. Quinoa is fantastic food. Also hailing from the Andes, just like our chia seeds. So our quinoa layer, which is gonna you know, provide us with not only a little bit of protein, but some good kind of carbs to carry us through the day. Making a bit of a mess here, as I do. So there is, there, Those are, that's, a, that's a better view on the layers. So let's go ahead and get our, our purple layer in there now. Got some purple cabbage going. And what's important with this salad is that we leave a little bit of room for us to shake. We wanna shake this up once we're ready to eat it. So if we're taking this with us, for example, we need a little bit of room, some, some head space to shake. Now I could add in the chicken, but I'm gonna keep the chicken on the side so that it stays nice and crispy, right? That's, that's, that's the way to go for me. Now let's say I'm making this to take to work, right? On goes the lid, into the lunch it goes. Take yourself a little dish of the salad dressing that we have made ready to go in another little container and all of a sudden you've got the components of a beautiful way to enjoy lunch. Our chicken's gonna be cooked just perfectly. Pretty quick here. And then, nice little baggie of this popcorn. Are you kidding me? What a fantastic meal. Hey, there you have it. Pumpkin seed crusted chicken salad with lemon chia dressing and popcorn. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. Now what beverage would help balance out all these great flavors? To help us out with that is Simon from Enrico Winery. Thank you so much for coming out today. Well, thanks for having us. Right on. So I've created a mason jar salad here with a lemon chia basil dressing. I've already shaken yours up for you. I uh, did a pumpkin crusted chicken. Uh, you know, kind of you had some idea of what I was going to do for you today. What did you decide to pair for, for this dish? 
we brought the 2018 Pinot Gris. Okay. This is state grown. Yeah. Um, great acidity. It will pair great with the, uh, the, 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 the breaded crusted chicken. Right, a little we'll bit cook. of richness there, right? So we'll, you want to balance that out. We'll cut right through the fat yep. and also add some freshness too. So awesome. I'm going to pull those. Yeah, please. That All sounds right. great. So Pinot Gris, you guys are uh, just up the island a little bit from Victoria here, right? Yeah, we're 40 minutes uh, north of Victoria in, in Cobble Hill. Okay. Uh, quite close to the ocean. Yeah. Uh, great, um, great site, great climate for, uh, for grape growing. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's have a taste, shall we? Cheers. Cheers. I love your guys' logo. Wow, that's nice. So you'll you'll pick up on a little bit of oak flavoring there. Yeah. Fifty percent of the uh, the wine was fermented in neutral oak barrels. The rest of it was fermented in stainless steel. Okay. To really sort of capture the the, the freshness of what Vancouver Island is known for. Absolutely, it's delicious. I love it. I'm yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of super dry wines. That's just perfect for me. Let's see how it uh, stacks up to our food, shall we? Sure. Nothing like a little hmm, finger food kind of lunch. What do you think? Amazing flavors. And like I thought, the acidity from the Pinot Gris comes mm -hmm. right through the right through the fat. This is a fantastic pairing. I'm loving it. I think that it works great. So Enrico Winery, you guys have been around for a little while. How, tell us a little bit. So plant, started planting in 2006. Okay. First production in 2009. Yeah. Um, so 50 acre property, 20, we're just over 20 acres now. Mm -hmm. uh, three acres of which are from the Pinot Gris. Yeah. So when you come into the property, the, the Pinot Gris section is immediately on your right hand side for that first three acres, and this is 100% from, from that block. That's amazing. Vancouver mm -hmm. Island product, Vancouver Island grapes, beautiful winery, great food. Thank you so much for coming Excellent. out today. Well, Simon. thanks for having us. Yeah, absolute yes. pleasure. Check out our website where you'll find the lowdown on today's show. I'm Chef Mike, and until next time, don't forget, dinner's better when we eat together.